Hey everyone, welcome back to The Red Path. It's Dara here with you again today and we got a hobby tips video coming up. So I was lucky enough to get my hands on one of the new Horus Heresy Beaky Marines, you know, those Mark 7 armor patterns. They're doing the rounds everywhere, they're really popular, and a lot of us are after buying the Horus Heresy box set to use all the different components inside it. And that box set comes with 40 of these new Mark 7 Marines. I was thinking to myself, you know, what does the World Leader crew want to do with all those all those marines because let's face it we don't all want to have guys with bolt guns running around so i decided i'm going to make this video about converting the beaky marines into corn berserkers so grab yourselves a brew it's going to be quite a fun one Okay, what's up everyone? So, we're going to start here today by talking a little bit about this kit and the bits that I'm using to convert this Horus Heresy Beaky Marine here into a Corn Berserker. So, I've done a little bit of pre-assembly on the actual Marine. I've glued his legs together and kind of put the torso together as well. And it's pretty nice, you know, he's got this nice little walking pose here. I'm quite a fan of it and you can do a lot with a pose like this. So we've just kind of clipped off some of the mole lines and all that. Now, the bits that I've chosen, I've gone for, I suppose it's a little bit of a minimal conversion to try and bring this guy to life as a world leader rather than just a standard marine. But what we have here is, so we've got a Forge World pistol, bull pistol, and a Forge World chain axe. They both come from the same Phobos kit. Uh, now you don't need to use like, you know, Forge World bits for this or anything. It's just, I have a load of these lying around and I need to use them up. So that's where we're at. We also have a Forge World Mark III shoulder pad for the world leaders here as well. And one of the veteran heads, this uh, cool little berserker one here. And aside from that, I said I'm going to keep the studded shoulder pad because I'm actually quite a big fan of those studs. I think they look really good for the world leaders. And we also have taken um, some arms here as well that are different from the ones that come with the bolter just to give him a more of a dynamic pose and kind of look more like he's a combat kind of guy rather than a gunslinger. So for that, I've actually taken two spare arms from the Chaos Space Marine kit and I've just trimmed the hand off this one so we can attach the chain axe. And this one we've just kept pretty much as it is for the bolt pistol. So there are the bits we're using today. The backpack I'm actually keeping from the, um, the kit for a couple of reasons. I actually really like the sculpt on this backpack. There's a lot of blank armor space that leaves it open for weathering. But mainly I was just a little bit too lazy to trim down this uh, new kind of backpack joint that they have going on here with this marine. Now it would be very very simple to just trim this back with the clippers and a file. But I do like these new backpacks and to be honest, uh, painting backpacks is like my least favorite thing on a model and the simpler they are the better. And these backpacks here, they're nice and simple, you can do a lot with them. Crucially, there's no trim. So that's one thing actually about these models that I'm a real big fan of. So when you're painting in the grimdark and you want to do lots of weathering and battle damage, you want big armor panels for getting that battle damage down, especially on marines. And that can be a little bit hard to do with the current Chaos Space Marine kit because there's an awful lot of trim which takes a while to paint and can be difficult to weather around. Now it does also let you do a lot of panel lining around that trim which is great but for this guy I think I wanted to keep the trim to a minimum. So there is a little bit on the arms just around the wrist joint but aside from that we pretty much have no trim on this guy whatsoever which will make him look a little bit more uniform. Now there is a lot of different bits that you could use for this. This is just one example and as we're working through I'll kind of show you guys some other possible alternatives that you could throw in. But they're the bit selection so let's get to actually putting this guy together. Okay so the first thing that we're going to do for assembling this guy is just put on the arms so we can get an idea of the pose that we're going for. So I'm just using a little bit of plastic glue here on this guy and we're just going to bring the arm in right like this. Now we're going to put them together kind of fast so that we can move this arm around if we need to as we go on. But the idea that I'm going for is that he's going to have his bolt pistol out forward like he's shooting and then have his chain axe kind of down by his side. So we're putting a little bit of a tilt on this so that the axe can kind of come in from the back like this and it won't kind of clip next to the leg. So you can kind of see the angle that we're going for here. 
So we'll just attach the other arm now, right here. And we're actually going for straight glue on this. We're not, you know, tacking it or anything like that. We don't need to do any uh, sub assembly because he's going to have quite an open body, basically, that will make it quite easy to paint. And with his pose the way that we're doing it, we don't really need to worry about sub assembly because, you know, we won't have any difficult parts that we can't reach if the arms are in front of the body. So we'll just have him kind of aiming his bolt pistol out forward like this. Nice and simple. So this is kind of the idea of the pose that we're going to go for. You know, he's got that front leg going forward and he's got his arm outstretched shooting uh, whoever's in front of him. And then we have this other arm coming down the side. So we're pretty happy with that. Let's get to putting on the shoulder pads next. Okay, so for the shoulder pad, we're going to start by putting a little bit of uh, super glue on the shoulder here. We're using Gorilla Glue for this because we're attaching a resin piece to a plastic component. We're just going to give it a generous measure there. That looks great. And let's slap on this glorious Mark III shoulder pad for the world leaders. Isn't that great? Mm-hmm. That's a nice, proper, proper shoulder pad. So we'll just move it around to get it to kind of a position that we're happy with. Always kind of helps to play around with these a little bit. But I think it kind of works for the pose. We might just angle it forward a little bit so it's more in line with the, the arm. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of vibe that we want to go for for that. Now, the interesting thing about these um, these studded shoulder pads is they actually come in two pieces, which is very new and not at all what we've seen from GW before. And a lot of the reason for this is so that the actual studs in the shoulder pad can be cast better. And it might be a little bit difficult to see from here, but there really is a defined difference with these studs. You know, they actually are raised up much, much better. And I'm, I'm a big fan of that. I think it's quite worth it. Some people have been saying it's a little bit difficult to, you know, kind of get rid of that seam or they're a little bit worried about it. But I'm just going to show you guys here that by applying a little bit more plastic glue than we normally need to, that's actually going to melt that seam down much better so that when we do this joint, it'll kind of push that seam away once it's after curing. So we're going to have to play around with this a little bit just as it's trying to make sure that the plastic is kind of melting fully and that we can basically make sure that it's going to be a flawless seam at the end. So ideally, probably what you want to do here is make sure that there's a little bit glue of glue kind of spilling out, like you can see here, and then we can actually file that away before we attach the shoulder pad. So we're just going to let this glue and then we'll come back for the next part. Okay, so while we have that shoulder pad curing, we're actually going to attach the chain axe arm now. So if anyone's worked with uh, resin weapon upgrades, you'll know how much of a pain this is because due to the small surface area that's actually being glued and the weight of components, it can actually be quite difficult to get a solid join straight away with these things, especially if you haven't uh, pre-cleaned the resin components beforehand because some of that sealing agent can still be there. What I've found is it's actually helpful to use a little bit less glue than you normally would. So we're just gonna kind of attach this, this chain axe arm here, just in like this. And once we have the start of a seal going, we'll be able to kind of play around with it a little bit more and make sure that the pose is kind of as dynamic and as cool as we want it to be. But for now, we're just gonna make sure that we're actually getting a, a solid join. And you can see here, you know, it's it's gonna take a little, a little while to make sure that we actually have a bond going there. So yeah. Okay, so we've glued on the chain axe and actually just glued on the bolt pistol as well. And we're pretty happy with this pose, I think. It's got this nice kind of walking forward menacing vibe. So we'd, we'll just have to make sure that the head lines up with the pistol so that he's actually looking at where he's shooting. But let's return to that, um, that shoulder pad now, that one with the studs. So it's pretty much cured out now and you can see we do have this line here. But that's a raised line now rather than a recessed one. So we can actually just go in with our scalpel and just very carefully kind of erase that line. And it'll basically be seamless then. 
And once you have a spray, uh, bit of spray paint down, you won't notice anything at all. So you can see it's actually quite a nice finish once it all kind of comes out, once you smooth down this mold line. Alrighty. So let's get this put on the shoulder now. So we'll just put a little bit of glue on the inside here. And slot it on in. Just make sure it's kind of lined up as we want it. There we go. So let's put a little bit of glue here for the backpack. Now, a lot of the time I'll actually just leave the backpack off so it's a bit easier to paint the back, but just for the sake of the video, we'll slap it on so we get a more complete picture. Nice. So this is what we've got so far. All that remains is to slap on a head. Now, the selection of that is going to be pretty important, so we'll come back to that for the next step. Okay, so the selection of a head for a model is always really important because it's going to be the first thing most people look at when they actually look at your model. Now, upon reflection, I actually realized that the first, the veteran berserker head that I chose is actually a little bit too big and doesn't really fit with the pauldron. So I pulled a selection of different heads and we're just going to work through them and kind of see how some different ones look. And I also kind of decided that I would pull some Chaos Space Marine heads from the new kit just because I want this guy to look a little bit more chaotic than he currently does. So let's see how some of those line up. He's got this first one here with a nice little top knot. Not bad, you know, we got the wind blowing in his hair, looking pretty good. Kind of a nice vibe. And it's always good to test out some different heads, kind of get a, a nice vibe and, and see which one is looking the best. So we have this other one here, it's got some kind of bull horns coming down the front. Real bruiser of a, a looking kind of guy. That's pretty cool too. But I'm not really a huge fan of those horizontal horns. So let's try one with a little bit more verticality going for it. Now that one looks pretty cool. Quite a menacing kind of aura to it. And we also have this one here, I believe it's actually from the Warp Talons kit, which kind of looks like a mutated Beaky Marine almost. So that's kind of cool too, if you want to kind of keep with the line of the armor marks. And we got some interesting cabling coming on down there as well. We also have this corrupted Mark IV helmet. One of my favorites from the yeah, Space Marine kit. That's got a really interesting vibe to it. And of course, you can always go with something classical and unforgettable. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> Wally in the heresy. Or something, you know, like a bear helmet or uh, without a helmet. You want to work some skin tones in and you're feeling a bit brave. Really get some expression going. So to be honest, I think my favorite is probably going to be this one with the horns. It brings that element of chaos kind of back to it and harkens to a berserker as well with the this not quite bunny ears aesthetic, but a similar enough vibe to that. So let's actually get that glued on and then take a look at him. Okay, so our guy is basically all put together now. Look at that pretty cool kind of vibe going on with this guy. I'm actually really happy with the overall finish. And I think he's quite distinctly a world eater. You know, the pauldron really helps bring that in. And of course the iconic chain axe as well. And it's crazy to think with just really, really little work that we actually managed to bring this guy from, you know, a bolter slung forward in a kind of trigger down position, very kind of generic looking marine, into something that I would say is quite naturally chaotic in its look. 
You know, this guy, I would say, doesn't look out of place in the 41st millennium. Now, he is a little bit cleaner, a little bit less Baroque than what we might be used to seeing. But if that's your vibe, you know, if that's kind of the, the sort of atmosphere that you're going for, I think you can actually make a lot of these guys look really convincing as 40k Marines. So that's going to be pretty much it for this guy. You know, it's a very simple conversion. And in a couple of videos to come, we're actually going to work through the box set and convert up a bunch of other Marines into different types of World Leader units, such as Warp Talons, Raptors, we might even do some Havocs. And we'll take a look at the different kind of poses you can get on everyone. So that's going to be coming up soon, but I said we'd do a Berserker first, just because of how iconic the, the unit is and how many of us want to use them. And that's kind of one of the ones that we're going to be putting together. So we're going to put some paint on this guy, obviously. We might do a little video on that as well. If you guys are interested, let me know down below. And uh, I can certainly put something together. But yeah, until ever, then I think we can call this guy done for now. Now you could obviously add some more decoration, maybe like a some sort of back banner or maybe a mark of chaos. You could add some chains or something on this guy, but I, I kind of like the min minimalism effect for this one. So that's going to be it for me for now, guys. So until the next video, stay healthy, stay safe, and kill Mainburn.